Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing transduction of painful stimuli. Okay, right, so I want to continue a discussion of the anatomy of nociceptors now. Okay, so we've looked at their terminals uh, within the skin. What I now want to look at is uh, the classification of different uh, neurons, which are somatosensory neurons, depending on the thickness of their axons. Okay, in addition, I want to look at where the cell bodies of these neurons are and uh, how these neurons are going to pass on their message into the spinal cord. Okay, right, so let's start off with the classification of primary somatosensory neurons. Okay, right, so firstly, what is a primary somatosensory neuron? Well, basically, a primary somatosensory neuron means any neuron which is bringing information into the spinal cord and which is the first neuron, basically. So it's the neuron which was actually activated by the somatosensory stimulus, basically. Okay, so this, uh, well, these nociceptors, which are detecting the noxious stimuli and firing action potentials in response to them, those are primary somatosensory neurons because their stimulus is somatosensory, it is a sensory stimulus, it's pain, and they're the first neuron, basically, that's detected that stimulus, hence they are a primary somatosensory neuron. Okay, right. Uh, so, let's have a look at the classification of different primary somatosensory neurons depending on their, uh, the size of their axons. Okay, so for now we're generalizing, we're going beyond nociceptors, we're just looking at any old primary somatosensory neuron. Right, so basically there are four categories of neurons. There is A alpha, A beta, A delta, and then there are also C fibers. Okay, right, so let's draw pictures of all of these. So, A alpha first. So, A alpha are giants. These are big, big neurons. And I should stress that this was done ages and ages ago. Basically, if you take a nerve, uh, which is a collection of loads and loads and loads of axons, you know, something that you can anatomically dissect out. Okay, and you take a cross section of it and you stain it and look at it underneath a microscope. You see uh, loads of loads of different axons, and they're all of different sizes, and you can categorize them into these four different categories. Okay, right. So, uh, this is a categorization on the basis of anatomy, on the basis of microanatomy, histology. Okay, it's not a, ba a categorization on the basis of function, although we'll see it does have meaning as far as function is concerned. Okay, right. So, these A alpha neurons then. Firstly, they have an incredibly thick diameter of around 20 micrometers. Okay, they also have a very thick covering of myelin, so they are myelinated, basically. Okay, which means that um, the action potential can jump from node of Ronvier to node of Ronvier, and um, it, it will do that just by diffusion of the ions rather than by saltatory conduction. Okay, and that hugely speeds up conduction, basically, of the action potential along the axon. Right, okay, so these are these A alpha neurons which have a diameter of around 20 micrometers. Let's now turn our attention to A beta. A beta are very similar to A alpha, but they're around half the size. Okay, so their diameters generally are around 10 micrometers long. Okay, so a diameter of around 10 micrometers, and they too are covered in myelin. Okay, so in red here, this is the myelin sheath that covers these A alpha neurons. Sorry, A beta neurons. Okay. And next up, A delta. A delta halves again. Okay, so their diameter goes down to around 5 micrometers now. Okay, so the diameter of this is around 5 micrometers, or 5 microns, and I can't really fit this in. There we go. And they will also be covered by a myelin sheath. Okay, so they'll have Schwann cells around them, which will produce a myelin covering. The C fibers 
are then much, much smaller. They have a diameter of around one micrometer, and they don't have a myelin covering, okay? And you have multiple C fibers running through the same Schwann cell, okay? So they're coated by the same Schwann cell. So this is the Schwann cell here which will not coat them in myelin, okay? So it won't produce the myelin uh, that covers them, okay? So they're unmyelinated. And then you'll have these little C fibers running together through this same Schwann cell, like so. And their diameter is generally around one micrometer. Okay, there we go. And basically, when you have a collection of um, uh, axons, C-fiber axons running through a single Schwann cell like this, it's called a fascicle. So this is a single fascicle of C-fibers. Okay, right. So those are the different categorizations of primary somatosensory neurons then. So our question now is the nociceptors that we are so interested in, can they be any of these four types of neuron? Well, the answer is no. You don't generally find nociceptors that are this sort of size. You don't generally find A-alpha nociceptors. But you can find nociceptors that are of the other three type. To be honest, A-beta is at a push, okay? Really, it's just A-delta and C-fibers. You will find some nociceptors which are A-beta fibers, but mainly they're A-delta and C-fibers. Okay, so you can have nociceptors which are all these three types of primary somatosensory neurons. Okay, right, and we can distinguish between these um, three different types of nociceptor fiber by calling these ones, which are A-beta and A-delta, we'll just call those the A-fiber nociceptors, and from now on we'll call the C-fiber ones just the C-fiber nociceptors. So we'll have these two different categories of nociceptors. A-fiber nociceptors, which are either A-beta, A-delta, uh, and also then we'll have the other category, which are C-fiber nociceptors. Okay, and the clear way of distinguishing between C-fiber nociceptors and A-beta or A-delta uh, nociceptors is that the C fibers don't have a myelin covering, whereas the A fibers, whether they're A, beta, or A, delta, they do have a myelin covering. Okay, in addition, there's an additional difference that you find between these A fibers, which are nociceptors, and these C fibers, which are nociceptors. So basically, this is with regards to the receptive field size of these different nociceptors. Okay, so basically, the A-fiber nociceptors have much smaller receptive fields, so let me show you what that means for a picture. So basically, let's say this is an A-fiber nociceptor, then its little branching might look a little bit like this. Okay, so what do I mean by a receptive field then? I mean the little area that this A fiber senses, basically. Okay, so this A fiber will sense nociceptive stimuli within this little area here, and this is the receptive field of that A fiber nociceptor. So the receptive field just means the little area of skin which this nociceptor is actually um, looking for noxious stimuli within. Okay, so if this a uh, nociceptor, which is an A-fiber nociceptor, fires an action potential. What can we infer from that? Well, we can infer that there is some noxious stimulus within this small little area over here, okay? So, we can pinpoint the area which is affected, basically, much better if we're receiving... Well, I haven't told you about C-fibers yet, but C-fibers are different from this. So, we can pinpoint the area where the noxious stimuli is quite well if we um, are detecting it for an A-fiber nociceptor. Whereas C-fiber nociceptors, as well as being unmyelinated, they've got much larger receptive fields, okay? So it might look something more like this, basically. Okay, so this is the receptive field of a C-fiber nociceptor. And this basically means that if this C-fiber nociceptor fires, we are going to struggle, basically, to find the actual... Uh, well, we're going to 
struggle to pinpoint the area that actually has the noxious stimulus. We have a much broader area which could uh, be the place where the noxious stimulus is coming from, basically. We have a much larger receptive field. So it's more difficult to pinpoint the source of the noxious stimulus if you're just getting an action potential for a C fiber than it is uh, if you're getting an action potential through the A fiber. And that's because the A fibers have a much more localized receptive field, whereas the C fibers have a much broader receptive field. Now, what's the significance of that? Well, generally, let's say uh, you have got some sort of injury to this portion of skin, okay? So the skin is maybe undergoing an inflammatory response. There are chemicals that are capable of activating nociceptors all over the place. Basically, initially, uh, the initially when you first injure that area, okay, what will happen is both the A fibers and the C fibers will be firing together, basically, and you'll get what's known as primary pain, basically, which is the first portion of pain. And this is the very sharp, intense pain of, I've just injured myself or done something, okay? So that's what primary pain is. So if, for instance, an insect maybe has just bitten you, okay, or stung you, you'll get the very sharp pain first. That's called primary pain. And that's when both the A fibers and the C fibers are firing together, okay? And usually it will be possible to tell exactly where the cause of the disruption is, so you'll be able to know exactly where that insect bit you or stung you, even without looking at it, okay? Uh, because the A fibers will be firing and therefore giving you very good information about where uh, the uh, incident has actually occurred. Whereas, there is then the period of secondary pain, uh, which, whoops, what have I done there? Forgotten the C. Okay, there is then a period known as secondary pain, uh, which is where the A fibers stop firing, okay, but there's still a disruption and this still sim stimulates the C fibers. So the C fibers continue to fire, okay, and they cause the much more dull aching pain that lasts for a much longer period after uh, the insect has bitten you, okay. But it's much more difficult to pinpoint exactly where the issue has occurred because the C fibers have much broader receptive fields so uh, you're not getting that sort of same in detailed information. Now this is a huge generalization to say that it's the A fibers which are involved in primary pain and the C fibers which are involved in secondary pain. It's an oversimplification, a huge ghastly oversimplification, but it's an oversimplification that is useful. Okay, for understanding why primary pain is very easy to localize and why secondary pain is much more difficult to localize. It's just sort of dull, achy, it's somewhere around there. Okay, right. So that's the um, anatomy of the different sorts of primary somatosensory neurons. What we now want to turn to is the classification further of the different types of A fiber nociceptor and the different types of C fiber nociceptor. So we've said we can have nociceptors which are both A fibers and we also have C fiber nociceptors. However, we can categorize them further basically because not all A fibers and not all C fibers will respond to absolutely all noxious stimuli. So we've seen a huge plethora of noxious stimuli. We've seen mechanical noxious stimuli. We've seen temperature noxious stimuli, too hot, too cold. We've also seen chemical noxious stimuli, ATP, potassium, protons. These are all noxious stimuli. The question then is, does a nociceptor, does a single nociceptor have nociceptors that are sensitive to all of these and therefore is a single nociceptor capable of detecting noxious stimuli of all those different types? Well, the answer is yes in some cases and no in other cases. It varies from nociceptor to nociceptor and therefore we categorize nociceptors further, not only based on whether they're a C fiber or an A fiber, but also on the basis of which actual noxious stimuli they respond to. So, let's now talk about this. So, basically we'll begin with C fibers. Okay, so C fiber nociceptors. So what are the different types of C fiber nociceptor? And now we're categorizing them 
based on uh, what their uh, actual stimuli, which um, stimulate them are, so which noxious stimuli they are actually sensitive to. So firstly, the main form of C fiber is what's known as the CMHC fiber. Okay, now what does MHC stand for? Well, the M tells you that this C fiber is responsive to mechanical painful stimuli. Okay, the H tells you that this uh, C fiber will respond to thermal noxious stimuli. Okay, and the C tells you that this will respond to chemical noxious stimuli. So this will respond to all forms of noxious stimuli. Okay, so this is often called a polymodal. Poly meaning many, modal meaning form. Okay, so polymodal C fiber. So it will respond to many different noxious stimuli. Okay, right, so that's the first type of uh, C uh, nociceptor. Okay, right, then we have ones which are almost as broad as this, but not quite. So, for instance, you have CMH fibers, which will just respond to mechanical and thermal stimuli, but not chemical stimuli. In addition, you have CMC fibers, okay, which will respond to mechanical stimuli, they'll respond to chemical stimuli, but not thermal stimuli, okay. You then have ones which are specific to a specific stimulus, so for instance, you have C fibers which respond to just mechanical stimuli, and C fibers which respond to just thermal stimuli. And then finally, you also have these type of C fiber known as a CMI HI fiber. Okay, now what does the CMI HI mean? Well, basically, this is what's also called a silent C fiber. Okay, so this can also be called a silent C fiber nociceptor if you like. Okay, and um, this will not respond to mechanical painful stimuli or thermal painful stimuli unless there is currently an inflammatory response occurring in that affected area. So let me draw a little picture of this. So let's say we have one of these silent C fibers within the skin. Okay, so here it is, like so. So if the skin is quite happily, happy and uninflamed, this uh, CMI, whoops, not like that, this CMIHI fiber, or silent C fiber, will not respond to thermal stimuli or mechanical stimuli. However, if there's some sort of inflammatory response going on in here, so if there's inflammation occurring within this portion of skin, you'll be producing all sorts of pro-inflammatory mediators, and these will work on the uh, CMIHI silent C fiber and will turn it on effectively. They'll make it so that now if you receive a mechanical uh, noxious stimulus or a thermal noxious stimulus, those stimuli will be capable of activating the CMIHI fiber and it will fire an action potential. Okay, so those are the different types of C fiber then. Okay. Next, we'll talk about the different classifications of A fibers. And again, we've discussed uh, how uh, A fibers are all myelinated. Now, what we want to do is categorize the A fiber nociceptors further. And I should stress, we're just talking about C fiber and A fiber nociceptors. We're not talking about uh, fibers which respond to uh, non painful sensory stimuli. Okay? We're just talking about nociceptors. This is the categorization of C fiber nociceptors and A fiber nociceptors. Okay, right. So, A fibers, the story is pretty much the same, okay? So, there is the A fiber, which is responsible to mechanical stimuli and thermal stimuli, okay? So, there isn't a A fiber which is polymodal in the same way that we have a polymodal C fiber, but we get pretty much there. We have these A fibers which will respond to mechanical stimuli and also heat stimuli, and there are two different types of these. So, there is the AMH uh, type 1, and there is also the AMH type 2, okay? which both uh, respond to mechanical stimuli as well as thermal stimuli. 
In addition, there are then uh, A fibers which just respond to mechanical noxious stimuli and also A fibers which just respond to thermal stimuli. Okay, so those are the four different types of A fiber. Now, these two will often be considered the same, so we'll have them just as A and H. Okay, um, so that is the classification of C fibers and A fibers as far as which noxious stimuli they actually respond to is concerned. Okay, so we'll continue this discussion in the next video.